Welcome to uh, the uh, 111 people who are on so far. Um, I know there are many more who even registered and we're so thrilled to gather together in this virtual space. Um, I loved people were posting where they're sitting from. It gives a sense of the global reach that this uh, fellowship is having and will continue to have. Um, I want to welcome you to uh, spend the next hour and 15 minutes or so um, not only in learning, but I will say quelling, um, thinking about what the, the future has yet to, to hold um, and the inspiring ideas that our, our fellows have been working on and that we're excited to share with you today. So by way of introduction, I wanted to just offer the, the following thoughts. A few months ago, I was invited to speak um, in a Zoom room <laughs> for a, uh, um, a small group of people who uh, were gathering together to uh, do some learning. And the theme of their learning was to uh, pick a, a major um, leader, thought leader, and to have somebody present his or her philosophical approach. And uh, when the person was inviting me, they went on to describe and give examples of the many male fabulous, wonderful teachers who had been invited to speak. And they were speaking about the many wonderful philosophers and scholars who are all also male um, and, and marrying those two ideas. And so uh, um, names like the Chavez Chaim and, and Heschel, et cetera, et cetera, um, Rav Aaron Lichtenstein were being, uh, their ideas were being shared through the voice of, of modern day leaders. And when I received the invitation, my heart sank and I thought to myself, how could it be that so far every speaker that the small group had been had brought in was male and all the ideas, the, philosoph the philosophical and halachic approaches that they were sharing were men's ideas. And I felt compelled to teach. And so I thought to myself, who, whose canon, whose work, whose philosophical approach could I share? And although the, uh, the notion out there is that there are no female voices and there are no, there's no scholarship written by women, that is not true. There are shelves, some shelves of women who have written and thought and shared their, their, their deep halachic, philosophical, midrashic approaches. We just don't pull those books out as often as we should. And so I actually shared the work of Judy Klitzner. She could have taught it herself, but I felt I took her, her philosophical approach of, of um, subversive sequels. And uh, I, I taught a idea that I had using her vision and approach to Torah and text. And I said explicitly as part of my introduction that I wanted specifically to draw out the gender dynamic and use a gender lens to, to uh, have this, this conversation. And I think people were, were both um, taken aback and inspired about uh, what is possible and what has been missing, what had been missing from their conversation. And that's, I think, why and how this fellowship was born. It was born out of a conversation between myself um, at Maharat and some, some uh, lay leaders here at Maharat and with the leadership at Safaria, where we began to imagine that women's voices need a, a platform and they, their scholarship needs to be elevated and, and uh, uh, given a, a venue um, in which to flourish. And we knew, as, uh, as some of us have said, that we can't offer time for women to write, but we can offer many resources and ways uh, and, and uh, platforms for them to, to publish. And so this fellowship was born with the uh, many thanks and gratitude to Maimonides for helping, uh, to helping fund a piece of the project. Uh, and we brought together, we, we had over 80 applications of women who were sharing ideas that they wanted to get out into the world. We had to, we had to select uh, only 14 and we began a journey of, of uh, helping to provide a, a framework um, for women to write more. 
And the result, I think, has been beyond our expectations. And I'm, I was thinking about how ideas, when they're born, are exhilarating. Watching an idea come about is, is freeing and exhilarating, and also so obvious. Before an idea is put out into the world, it doesn't exist. Watching somebody uh, go through a process of thinking and then writing an idea and watching that process is truly awe-inspiring. And I think the, uh, the, we are witnesses to, uh, to uh, that, uh, having that happen from, um, from the earliest times, I would say the, the image that comes to mind is the first time that something was written down or carved into stone, so to speak, were the Luchot. And the Torah tells us in Shmat that, that the, the tablets were the work of God, um, and that it was carved out, the words of God were carved out on these tablets, on the stones. And the word charut um, is a, a confusing word to be used. It means engraved on the stones. But the uh, the uh, um, Mefarshim and specifically um, later uh, rabbinic ideas, especially in Perkava, notice that there's a, a a similarity between the word charut and chirut. Do not read charut or carve, but rather we read chirut because somehow there's a connection between engraving on a stone and and um, the the ability to express ourselves with freedom. Now. There's many words for freedom um, that are used in the Torah. The word the word chirut is not used um, as as uh, as its translation in freedom in the Torah, but here I think that that the the uh, mafarshim and the, our rabbinic tradition is trying to make a specific point. You see, when something is engraved on a luchot, on on stones, it's it's engraved forever, and it's not like pen and paper or ink and parchment. When ink is, is uh, transcribed or written on parchment, there's two entities, there's ink and there's parchment. And it's possible for that ink to be erased off that parchment. It's possible for, for those words to be ever changing. But when something is engraved within stone, it is there forever. And I think that that's the process that we have gone through. We are trying to engrave something into the very soul and essence of our community, into the way in which we thought we were doing something and the way we're going to continue to be doing. And so what has this fellowship done? What has been engraved now and, and what we're hoping to normalize from here on in for our community? What has been engraved is that we simply want to bring more voices of Torah out into the world. What has been engraved is that we're bringing women's scholarship specifically out into the world, that we're elevating women's Torah, that we're helping women feel authority on their, on their own Torah and, and authorities um, for the community. We are engraving the importance of being part of a cohort, of being part of a community, of, of, of being a support system for one another as we're going through the process of writing. We're engraving the fact that this group of women had thought about modernity, 21st century issues that, that the world is grappling with and have thought about how to, to offer a lens of Torah in some of the many issues that we're all dealing with. We are witnessing right now the engraving, the marking forever and forever for all eternity on new ideas onto the world. And I bless all of you. And I'm so grateful to the 14 fellows and to the team at Safaria and the team at Maharat for, and of course, Maimonides for allowing this opportunity, for allowing these 14 fellows, um, plus the, the, the many others who I hope will be part of our fellowship in the future to engrave forever their ideas, their words, their heart on the, on the the um, on on the in the world of Torah for, for for us moving forward. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Hi, everyone. My name is Brett Lockspizer. Um, I'm one of the co-founders and the chief technology officer of Safaria, and I'm so inspired to see everything that's been going on and to read the writings of the fellows this year. And I just wanted to say briefly that. Um, you know, 
the, the vision of Safaria that uh, my co-founder Josh and I originally had was so much inspired by a Daf of Talmud and the sense that um, there are always multiple voices together on a page and that the strength of our tradition and what makes our tradition so interesting is the total number of voices that can speak together and not just have any one source of you know, uh, authority or, or, or speech coming through. Um, the interface of Safari as we built it was really intended to highlight this idea that you should always see multiple voices together at once. Um, we also knew that this project for us was something I wanted to start with codifying kind of the Torah of the past, the traditional sources as we've received them, but that that was only really a starting point for a bigger project of thinking about the future of Torah and what Torah is gonna to look like going forward and who the voices are gonna be that are gonna to contribute to that project going forward into the future. Um, so as I've been looking through the collection of all of the writings the fellows have been putting together right now, all the different voices literally on one page together, um, I feel this great sense of inspiration and, and pride that this is the mission of Safaria, really. This is what we're trying to do. And this is what you are fulfilling for us is to bring new voices into this conversation and create a real future of Torah. Um, and I just, I really wanna to say to all of the fellows that you, you are the, the future of Torah. This is, this is what's, what we're bringing into the future right now. And I wanna thank you and wish you a, a lot of great inspiration to continue this work. Thank you all for being here today. My name is Sarah Wachenfeld. I'm the Chief Learning Officer at Safaria. And I wanna pick up a little bit where Brett left off and a little bit where Rabbi Sarah left off as well. And just tell you something about the genesis of this fellowship and how we see it in terms of thinking about the larger mission of Safaria. The Torah gives us ideas that are both ancient and timeless, and the premise of living life in dialogue with Jewish texts is that we have this living Torah, which is constantly expanding and developing as the years go by. So at Safaria, we think a lot about what it means for Torah to be enlivened and strengthened by the shift from one medium to another, in this case, from print to digital. And it's not the first media shift in Jewish history. Maybe the most memorable transition is actually from oral to written. And this is part of what Rabbi Sarah spoke so beautifully about, this idea of having written text that can powerfully inform our experiences. The Gemara records the idea that there is a Torah Shabal Peh, an oral Torah, and a Torah Shabich a written Torah. And the Gemara says that things that are transmitted orally, trans traditions that are transmitted orally are actually not meant to be written down. You're not supposed to write down the Torah Shabbat al-Pah. And yet already from the time of the early Amoraim, from the early years of the Talmud, we have indications that Chazal did see the wisdom and necessity of recording and writing that which had previously been transmitted verbally and passed from student to teacher. The Gemara in Gittin 60a speaks about this need that on the one hand, we, we don't wanna write things down. We have this rule against writing things down, but since it's not possible, it's not possible actually to build our entire religious tradition around only things that are given over verbally, we need to write things down. And so we're willing to abrogate a Torah idea in order to do that. And I would say, the rest is history. The rest is represented by shelves and shelves and shelves of Torah in the Beit Midrash. There are advantages to an oral tradition and there are also drawbacks. And I think that some of the aspects that are one are also the other. So an oral Torah is dependent on relationships between teachers and students and having access to those conversations and those relationships. You need to be in the Beit Midrash where it happens in order to be party to that Torah. And that can be a really beautiful thing but women, of course, were often outside of that room, excluded from those teacher-student relationships. Writing down Torah was the start of a revolution that allowed the Torah to escape beyond the walls of the baby trash and make its way to those who were not invited to be part of the conversation. In my own lifetime, I've been so blessed to see our Batei Midrash expanded and transformed by amazing institutions of women's Torah learning, such as Maharat, which is completely revitalizing the landscape of Jewish leadership. And I think the genesis of this program, these programs that Safari and Maharat have been partnering on this year come from the synergy between the visions of our two institutions. 
just as the rabbis in the time of the Gemara recognized that there was a need to write down the important teachings, to record precious ideas so they wouldn't be lost, we have jointly recognized that it's important to have women as teachers and as leaders, and also that we need to preserve that Torah by writing it down and ensuring that it's disseminated widely. And so the next step in bringing our Batei Midrash into the future is adding women's Torah to the shelves of the Beit Midrash, both physically and digitally. I'm very grateful to Maharat, and I speak for the entire Safaria team now, for being our partner in this work of ensuring that women's voices will help define the future of Torah. I want to thank Rabbi Sara for her visionary leadership, as well as Jen Begg, Rabbi Neetliz Shane, Amanda Schechter, Jennifer Feldman, everyone for their incredibly hard work and their vision. I also want to reiterate what Rabbi Sara said earlier, that we had over 80 applications for this program. And so I'm forever grateful to our selection committee. Um, Rabbanit Zavara Zlachauer was my partner in, uh, in the world of Maharat on that. And Dr. Sarah Lev, Dr. Judith Houtman and Dr. Judith Rosenbaum for joining with us in selecting these 14 fellows. The fellows are blessed to have terrific writing coaches and I wanna thank them as well. Nicole Cox, Eli Shava Urbas, Revenit Zavara Zlachauer, Dr. Jillian Steinberg, Leah Goldstein, and Samim Fruchter. I wanna acknowledge our presenters. At the beginning of this fellowship, we had three wonderful workshops for our fellows. And our presenters were Dr. Erica Brown, Eli Shava Urbas, Rabbi Barry Schwartz, Alana Newhouse, and Gila Fine. And we're really grateful to them for setting us right on this journey, um, pointing out the path for us. And I want to thank our 14 incredible fellows for embarking on this journey with us and just for being willing to expand the potential of Torah in this way. You'll get to hear their voices more in a moment. And so finally, I will thank you all for being here. The collection that you received in the, in the sign up email or after you signed up, the collection that you received has excerpts from their work. It'll be in the chat here on Zoom also. And you will be able again to hear their voices more in just a moment. Um, so we appreciate you joining us today. And we're going to ask you now to select your breakout room. So there will be breakout rooms available momentarily. And the, the fellows will be broken up into those breakout rooms for possible options. And you'll see the options uh, show up um, in the breakout rooms. And it's, it'll be a chance for you to hear a little bit more about the work that our fellows have done. So room one will be to vote um, with Rebbenit Leia Sarna, Rebbenit Goldie Guy, Rebbenit Eliza Sperling, and Rebbenit Hamutal Shoval. Uh, room two is theological works with Rabbi Avi Strasberg, Rabbi Atara Cohen, uh, and Renana Dain. Um, room three will be uh, Rabbi Margo Hughes Robinson, Maxine Berman, and Nomi Schneck talking about new textual perspectives. And room four will be Zoe Furtick, Rabbi Sari Laufer, and Dr. Tammy Jacobowitz speaking about contemporary approaches to Torah. So without further ado, we'll invite you to join the breakout rooms. Miriam is our moderator and Zoom controller if you need any assistance, and we look forward to seeing you there. Miriam, can you please move me to number three? I'm on a portal and I can't message. If you can put me in room one, I'd appreciate it. Yeah, um... it's Ellen Elo Mintz. I don't know if you can see me. Ah, uh, Bill Cutter in room four. Um... Oh, here, here are the breakout rooms. 
Bella Weinberg, room one. <laughs> Judith Devon's room four, please. It seems like we might have be having some technical, technical difficulties also. Please just stand by as we figure this out. One second. Is everyone in their rooms or are we supposed to stand by? I think we're standing by. Okay. If you know how to go into a room, you could try yourself. So you could just, there's at the bottom, there's four boxes of your screen. It says breakout room. If you click that. It doesn't show that on the screen. Okay. When you click it, there's just a blank uh, thing saying breakout rooms in progress. You can't get into a Okay. Um, we are trying to figure this out. Um, if you message me directly, I can put you into the room that you. I message you directly, but I didn't get in. There. Me too. I did the same, and I'm not in either. As did I. Yeah, it's not working yet. Which which one is room four? Is that contemporary approaches to Torah? I think so. Yes. Okay. I, if you go into those four little boxes and you scroll down, then I think you that's how you join. I'm going to try that. Yes, if you scroll down to the box, you should see a blue, you should see a little thing that says join. You can click on that and that will allow oh. you to. Okay, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to try that. Let's see. I don't have that capacity. There are no four boxes on my screen. Oh, I see them. Me neither. I have the same. I don't see any boxes. Right. I have the four boxes, but it doesn't take me anywhere. <laughs> and I have the four boxes, but it doesn't say join anywhere. <laughs> I can see who's in what room, but I can't I am join trying anyone. To get if you go everybody. all the way, if you go all the way at the top, like if you want Shuvat and you press the 33 and you press join, you should be able to. So do you see what I mean? There's a number, like if you're at Shuvat, you put, yep. So for those who have the full boxes, if you click the uh -huh. box and then you, you, you put your mouse over the one you want to join, you should be able to join. It's not working for me. I have the four boxes and all I have when I click on it is a blank screen. Me okay. too. I don't even know where to find the four boxes. Okay, so that's Karen and Aya, right? Yeah. I would like to be in room four. And I'd like room four also. Me too. Yeah, Miriam, if you get a chance, could you put me in room four as well? Mine is not connecting properly. Can you give me your name? Because I cannot see I'm, your... I'm as, I'm as BJC. I don't have my... Here, I can turn my camera. Sure. And you want to be in room four? No yeah. problem. Thank you. Yep. Miriam, can you move Aya to room four? Uh, Aya ben Betensky? Yeah. Sure. Done. Okay. And I think... Um... If somebody else who wanted to be in room four. 
Um, other people who are on, do you want to, Gabriel, do, which room do you want to be on? Could you put Judith Devins in room four when you have a chance? Uh, Judith, what room are you in now? She's not, she's in our room. So oh, interesting, I don't even see her. I, I'm waiting. I see her, but I don't, I don't have capacity to put people in rooms. So, you know what, let me make you a co-host. Judith just came on with camera. I don't know if that is helpful. Yeah, I thought that might help you. <laughs> okay. Mariam, I, I don't I still don't see the ability to put her in a breakout room. You know, I don't see her name in the list of unassigned. So I'm right now looking to see if she's somehow someplace else. Because the only way for me to assign a room is through the list. And she's not she's not in the list. Okay. Her, I mean her box is right there, Judith. See, why don't you wait? <laughs> I'm real. <laughs> so, no, we. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that this this might be a Zoom thing because you are not here. I mean, I see that you are here. That here. is not the issue. I I see her. It just says put in waiting room. It doesn't give the a breakout room option for some reason. Yeah, yeah that's what it did for me. That's I'm having the same. I'm having the same issue. <laughs> it's not here. Um, All right, there we go. Um, Tamar, which group did you want to be in? Um, sorry, I'm just coming in, so I'm not sure what the groups are. Um, okay. We have to shoot. Go ahead. Um, you could also try if go to the breakout room yourself and try to do it, but one is Chuba. Two is, um, uh, sorry, two, one is Chuva, two is Theological Works, three is New Textual Perspectives, and four is Contemporary Approaches to Torah. That's a very difficult choice. Um, I guess I'll go for Chuva. So am I not going in a room? Is it not gonna work for me? <sighs> I'm not, I almost wonder if you should um, log out and log back in so that okay. your name shows up. Okay. PCC Club, would you like to join a room? You're on mute. Sorry, so sorry. Uh, I'm so sorry. Could you repeat what the uh, choices are? Sure. You have Chuvot, Theological Works, New Contemporary Perspectives, or Contemporary Approaches to Torah. Uh, new contemporary perspectives, please, if that's possible. So hit join. Yep, you should be, they should be transferring you over. There you go. Anybody else? Hi, Sarah, would you like to join the room? I would love that. And can you put me in Chivo, please? Absolutely. Thank you. Who else can we help? Hi, sorry. That's okay. How can we, who, what room would you like to join? Uh, wherever Tammy Jacobowitz is. Um, let's see here. Tammy's in room four. Yeah. Great. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Gabrielle, is there a room you'd like to join? You can, do you have to unmute yourself? I just want to ask, how long are the breakout rooms for? Is there going to be like a big group that comes together and discusses things? Or are we in these breakout rooms for how long? We're in the rooms for 45 minutes, and then there'll be a regrouping at the end with a close. Oh, so actually have to Sorry, what? 
Go ahead, Carolyn. Oh, okay, so then we have to be in a room. Okay, okay, then can you put me one something, I don't know, other contemporary perspectives or something, I don't know. Sure. Great, thanks. Hi, sorry, the rooms are not numbered in my breakout rooms. Can you just tell me the title of that? Absolutely, it's uh, oh, okay. two vote. It's two uh, vote. No, 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 Lisa, you want you want Tani, right? Yeah. Contemporary it's not two approaches vote. to Tara. Where? Contemporary approaches. Right. That's what I thought. That makes sense. Thank you. Hi, this is Alana Berlin. I'm I'm really just here to observe from the Walder Foundation. Um, so, but I. I think it'd be nice to join the contemporary perspectives if that's possible. Sure. Thank you. All right, Miriam, I'm gonna go to a group now. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Thank you for sticking around. Hi, Toby, is there a room you'd like to join today? I can't hear you, I'm sorry, you might be on mute. You are on mute. You are absolutely right. Um, <laughs> uh, let, let me try theological works. Okay, I'm trying to put you. Can I do that myself? You can. If you scroll down, you should see the names or scroll up depending on your screen and you'll see the names of the breakout rooms and all you have to do is click on it. There you go. Off she goes. Judith, that worked. It's very exciting.
Hi, Michal. We're all in breakout rooms. If there's a, a room you'd like to join, I can help you hop into that room. Matthew, same with you. I, I just saw the message on the screen. Um, how long are the breakout rooms for? We have another 15 minutes. And then another 15 minutes together? Uh, it's uh, that will be the that will be the closing piece of the of the event. Yes. And, and how long are the breakout rooms already in session? Because I'm uh, not sure I want to. Go ahead. No, no, I'm not sure I want to jump in the middle when something is already going on. I just walked in, no so I'm happy to wait and listen to the end. No problem. Mm, you can hang out with me, but it's the quiet section. I, <laughs> it's the quiet part. No, no, it's okay. I'll, I'll <laughs> mute and uh, yeah, organize my stuff here and no wait for at least to hear the end. Okay, no thank you. My pleasure.
Hello, Naomi. Can I put you into a room? I've got a few more minutes left.
please, can you just tell me the process of this? We were just in a little breakout room. What happens now? We're going to wait for everybody to um, come out of the breakout rooms and then we'll be um, gathering together for the, for the closing piece of the event. Welcome back everyone. I'll give it a minute for everyone to gather back from their breakout rooms. And sorry, what is the closing piece? What is going to happen I'm, now? I, I'm going to speak in just one minute, but I'm just giving a sec for everyone to reorient and um, the screen will change over so you can see me instead of the slide. Um, but I'm just going to wrap up by thanking you all so much for being here today. I hope that you enjoyed your breakout room conversations as much as I did, um, as much as I think everyone in, in our group did, and that you really benefited from getting to hear the voices of these amazing Torah scholars. As a reminder, you can find all of the excerpts that were shared today in the collection on Safaria, and that's been shared in the chat a few times. Um, if you want more information about the fellows themselves, that's also available there. Each sheet has um, a little bit about the individual fellow, as well as about their project and an excerpt. And I'm also sharing in the chat a sheet about um, the, the other writing program that Safaria and Maharat have been working on this year, which is the Writing Circle. And so if you're interested, you can check that out. I just shared some information about that in the chat. And so again, on behalf of uh, my team at Maharat and also at Safaria, I wanna thank you all so much for being here today and for giving a public audience for this project, which I think you, you can now see, you've experienced from hearing everyone speak, uh, the tremendous amount of work that's been put in uh, first and foremost by all of these amazing fellows over the course of the year. We're so grateful to them. We're so grateful for their Torah, for having it out there in the world. And we're so grateful to all of you for being here with us today. We hope that you'll stay in touch and keep following these amazing women um, on their careers. This is, in a lot of ways, this is just the beginning as they are continuing to write. So this fellowship has been in progress for about six months. It's a relatively short amount of time. Some have already been published as articles. Others are still in progress. Some of these will eventually, please God, make it out into the world as books. So we hope you'll join us in wishing these women a Nesia Toba, a wonderful continued journey as they continue to write. And again, we thank you all for joining us today. Bye everyone.